In this example, we will see how the condition of being an adiabatic system changes the outcome of the analysis. Here, my piston and cylinder assembly is in an insulation clad that there is no heat exchange with my system and its environment. Now, building on the previous example, we said that we need heat exchange in order to keep the temperature constant. Now we have no heat exchange, therefore, temperature does not need to remain constant. Now let's look at our energy balance here. There is no mass exchange, this term disappears. No mass exchange, this term disappears. There is no shaft work, no moving, rotating objects. We have a piston and cylinder assembly and volume is changing. Of course, this term is there and there is no heat exchange. The remaining functions are only the internal energy and the surface boundary movement term. The u over dt is equal to minus p dv over dt. Again, my system is the gas. My gas is an ideal gas. I will call Ig to reflect ideal gas. And when I say ideal gas, I can use all the equations that are pertinent to the ideal gas. The equation of state, PV is equal to N times R times T, and the relationship between the internal energy of an ideal gas and its temperature. So, I will, now you see, here I have one independent variable. Time is my independent variable but it just drops out of my equation because it's identical on both sides and I can cancel it out. I can simply have du being equal to minus p dv. But still I need the relationship between u and v and p in order to be able to solve this problem. Now that relationship is not going to be totally straightforward, but we have a way of navigating around the problems, like we are engineers. Now first we made the ideal gas, we, we said that the gas can follow the ideal gas law. In other words, I can write on this side of the equation P from the ideal gas law, right? This is N times R times T over V, which I will write dV over V. Okay, this is this side. On the other side, I remember I had another equation. Internal energy of an ideal gas was only a function of temperature, that dU over dT was a constant. So I have on this side, n times cv star times dt, okay? Now, I have a temperature containing term on this side. I have a term reflecting temperature on that side, which I will transfer here. I will cancel and I will have CV star times dt over t to be equal to minus r. I will take r here also, minus dv over v. And I will check the dimensional consistency of this equation. 
Here, volume divided by volume, dimensionless. Temperature divided by temperature, dimensionless. So, CV should have the same units as R. So, let's make a note of this, that CV star has the units of energy per unit mass or mole and absolute temperature. I write Kelvin to be particular. Mass times cancel. Kelvin. R, ideal gas constant, has the units of energy per unit mass per unit absolute temperature, which is Kelvin. They are identical. They are in the same system of units. They cancel. This is completely a dimensionless system of equation. And now I integrate. In my example, the seed capacity is independent of temperature. From T1 to T2, from V1 to V2. Okay, so I have T2 over T1, the logarithm, CV star over R is equal to the minus in front V2 over V1. Let's add this to the power minus 1. Let's take that to the power. Let's get rid of logarithms. I have T2 over T1 to the power CV star over R is equal to V1 over V2. Now, what does this equation tell me? This equation tells me that if I'm going to change the volume of a gas under adiabatic conditions, the temperature of the gas is also going to change. If I'm going to compress the gas, the temperature will increase. If I'm going to expand the gas, the temperature will decrease under which condition? Under adiabatic condition. This is important. You must remember this. Adiabatic compression increases the temperature of the gas. Why? Because of the compression, the internal energy of the gas increased. Now let's calculate the work. This is work, right? This is delta work. Hmm? This is the differential work. Is equal to du. So the total work must be equal to integral of du. That is equal to n times Cv star times dt. And work is equal to n times Cv star times t2 minus t1. Where did I get t2? I got t2 from a knowledge of V2. I knew what the final volume would be. That was my problem. Although that wasn't very clearly stated in the beginning of the problem, I had a gas at V1. I was compressing this gas to V2. Okay, I calculated. I started from the first law. I eliminated the terms that I did not need. I ended up with this equation that is pertinent to my situation. I had to substitute the ideal gas law for pressure and the relationship between the internal energy and its, the gas temperature here. 
in order to obtain an equation for temperature. Now I use this equation for temperature to calculate the internal energy change, which is equal to the work done on the gas. Now, I changed my variables from energy to temperature. Here, this is an energy variable, but I have this in terms of volume that came from the definition of force and pressure. All right, but here I changed my variable from internal energy to temperature. Now this variable is my actually fundamental dependent variable, fundamental. Dependent variable. This is a dependent variable, right? Dependent variable. What is my independent variable? It is time. But I changed it to temperature. This is characterizing. dependent variable. Okay? Between the fundamental dependent variable and the characterizing dependent variable, we have we have the need to find a mathematical solution for our problem. So by changing the variable, we were able to deal with the mathematics and also the physics of the situation. I'm going to give another example to reflect more on the necessity of coming up with a characterizing depending variable through mass balance.